Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and in this video, we are going to be uh, adding to the game we've been working on so far, and we are going to be adding projectiles or bullets. So the code I'm using uh, currently is the code we finished with at the end of our movement and timing video, the previous video that, uh, that you've watched. And uh, what we're going to do first and foremost is we're going to come up here to our, our objects.h, and we are going to go ahead and add our bullet. Uh, our ship is going to fire bullets, and we're going to go ahead and add those. So bullet, struck bullet, and now our bullet is going to have a lot of the same properties uh, that our player has. So first off, it's going to have an ID, it's going to have an X position, it's going to have a Y position. Uh, it's going to have uh, this new variable called live. Um, that's how we know, not live, I apologize. Uh, that's how we know if the bullet is currently live. Um, only live bullets will, will move forward, only live bullets will collide. Um, and then speed, how fast we want our bullet to travel. Okay, so that is our bullet uh, struct. Then what I want to do is I want to determine how many bullets I'm going to let myself, uh, let my guy fire. Um, it's kind of the classic like Mega Man where you fire three and then you have to wait until one of them goes off the screen and then you fire another one. We're going to limit the number with it we can fire, you know, just keep things nice and simple here. So I'm going to come up here to our globals and I'm going to name a constant int uh, and it's going to be num bullets. And in this case I'm going to say five. Five is reasonable. Um, it's actually hard to 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 need more than five with the speed that they travel and the size of our screen. So we're going to use five bullets there, uh, and we are going to go ahead and create right here under spaceship our array of bullets. So it's going to be bullet bullets sub five. All right, fantastic. Uh, now, like we do with the ship, we're going to need to initialize our bullets so that. Uh, so that we'll know, or so we can fill out this, the, the, the speed and the ID and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a prototype up here. Um, and I'm actually going to create uh, a couple uh, prototypes all at once, um, because I know I'm going to need them. So the first is init bullet, and that's going to take a bullet array and int size, which will be the size of that array. I'm also going to do uh, draw bullet. We know we're going to need to draw it. And once again, array and pass it in size. Now, the bullets are all well and good, but we have to, need some way of getting them on the screen. So I'm going to do void fire bullet. There's that. And then I'm going to do uh, finally update bullet because unlike the player that gets updated whenever we, we press a key, the bullet, once we fire it, needs to update itself. Uh, so we need to make that happen in a function. So there we go. So those are our four functions there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and copy these, come down to the bottom, and I'm actually going to hit these minus signs to condense that a little bit. Great. All right. And I'll drop those down right there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do with our bullets is we're going to need to initialize them. And since it's an array, we're going to have to use a for loop. So we do for in i equals zero, i is less than uh, size, i plus plus. And I'm going to say bullet sub i dot id equals bullet and bullet sub i dot speed and our bullets can actually travel at a speed of 10 and then bullet once again that that's an arbitrary number I picked um, just through testing this and live equals false and you'll note there's no x or y because the bullet isn't live it hasn't been fired uh, when the game starts and live equals false so it's not uh, it, the bullet is not being fired off. Now I'm going to come up and plug that in here. I'm going to come to where we're initializing our ship, and I'm just going to do init bullet, and I'm going to pass in our bullets array and num bullets. All right, great. 
So as the game starts, uh, our, our array of five bullets will get uh, initialized. So fantastic. So the next function that we created is the draw bullet function because every frame we're going to need to draw any live bullets that exist. So let's go ahead and create that or define that function here. Once again, we're going to start off with our, our, our for loop. Our i is less than size, i plus plus. And in here, I'm going to say, in here, I'm going to say if bullet sub i dot live, that means the bullet e is alive, al draw build circle. In this case, our bullet is just going to be a circle. And in, you'd be surprised at how many games the projectiles are actually just small primitives because they're generally so small and they're traveling so fast that you hardly ever really notice. Um, and I'm going to draw it at X, I'm going to draw it at Y, and I'm going to give it a radius of 2, and AL map RGB. My color is going to be 255, 255, 255, white. Alright, fantastic. So, um, Every cycle, if the bullet is alive, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. We're drawing our ship. Now we'll also draw a bullet. If our bullet's alive, uh, it'll fire up. Or it'll be drawn. Great. Okay. Now, I can run this here, and uh, uh, obviously we're still not going to be able to see our bullets. I might be, I might be initializing them, I might be drawing them, but until they're actually turned to be alive, right, um, you know, we're never going to see them. And the way we do that is we fire those bullets, okay? Now one thing I'm noticing here uh, is with our fire bullet function, uh, we have the array of bullets, we have the size of the array, but we're missing one important thing. There's something I forgot to type at the top here. And what that is is how are we supposed to know where the bullet's going to start when the spaceship uh, fires it? We need to know the position of the spaceship, right? So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to come back up here to my prototype, and I'm going to actually add in another argument of uh, type spaceship. And we are actually going to pass the ship in. Um, so I apologize for forgetting that earlier. We're going to pass the ship in, and when we know where the ship is, it'll be much easier to fire off our bullet. So I'm going to come back down here to fire bullet. And what we're going to do is we are going to look for um, dead bullets, bullets that, uh, that, that don't exist. What I mean by that is whenever we fire a bullet, the, the, the me member of it is set to true. So what we want to do is we want to look for any bullet that is currently not live. And we are going to set that one to live. So what we have here is bullet.i x is going to equal, um, and now I need to add our ship in here. That uh, is going to equal our ship.x plus 17. That plus 17 is an arbitrary thing. Uh, I determined that uh, based on uh, based on looks. Uh, the ship hull extends. Uh, from the X position of the ship out about 16 pixels, so I make it at 17, uh, so it looks like it's coming out of the tip of the ship. Um, and then I'm going to do Y equals ship dot Y, since it'll be parallel with the ship. And then finally, bullet sub I dot live equals true. Okay, so we're turning it on, essentially, so that it won't get fired again until it's dead. And one last thing is very important here. Uh, we don't want to just say the first time we fire our gun, we don't want it to fire all five bullets at the same time in the same loop. So I need to break so that we only fire one at a time. Now, if we cycle through here and we don't find any live bullets, nothing will fire. It'll just wait. Um, so we are, are, are going to fire one if it, if it exists. And then if it doesn't, we are just going to uh, do nothing. And one last thing is I gotta add the ampersand there. Not the ampersand that would run, I apologize. We needed that ampersand up off the ship because we were passing it by reference. All right, great. Now what we're gonna need to do is plug this fire bullet uh, 
uh, function into our input so that whenever we hit the space bar it fires off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to where we have Allegro key down uh, so that event obviously fires off whenever we press the key down and I see here that we're already keeping track of the state of our spacebar and I'm going to leave that like it is because uh, it might be useful later on to have that information it doesn't really hurt to keep that information on hand in case you want to, to modify the game any further but what I am going to do is this is I'm also whenever I press the, the space down I'm going to call our fire bullet function and I'm going to pass in bullets uh, I'm going to pass in num bullets and I'm going to pass in our ship. So whenever we press this space bar down the first time, uh, it's going to fire our bullets off. Alright, so we can actually uh, uh, run this now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the bottom here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out. We're going to go ahead and give this a run. One thing, uh, very much like in the last video that I forgot to do, uh, is we're going to need to come back over here to objects.h and add this semicolon. I always forget that semicolon off of, on, at the end of a struct, so I apologize for that. So we need that semicolon there. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And we have our spaceship. Our spaceship moves around. And when I hit the space bar, you can see this. Our bullets exist, right? And I can only have five on the screen. And obviously we're missing some, some very important part of that. And the part is that the bullets now don't go anywhere. And that is the, the job of that last function which I commented out just so that we could get this to run so you could see the bullets firing off. Um, and that is the update bullet. An update bullet is something that's going to get called every single game cycle uh, and it's going to update the positioning um, and, and whatever the bullet is currently doing. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to do 4 int i equals 0, i is less than size, i plus plus, and I'm going to say if bullet sub i dot live we only need to modify live bullets dead bullets do not uh, update bullet and I'm going to say bullet sub i dot x plus equals bullet sub i dot speed alright and then we need to do a little bit of balance check so I'm going to do if bullet sub i dot x is greater than width the width of our screen, I'm going to do bullet sub i dot live equals false. So it hits the edge of our screen, it's going to go out of the, the game and we're going to turn it off there. So uh, let's come up here to our, our update portion, our timer portion, and we are just going to go ahead and get that plugged in. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and handle that right there at the, the bottom of the Allegro timer uh, event handler. I'm going to say update bullets bullet and we're going to pass in bullets and num bullets all right fantastic and i run this and we've got our, our guy moving around and look at that firing bullets all right fantastic so we have the projectiles added into our game so we're actually getting pretty close to the end of our very simple game here. We need to look at adding uh, comets to our game, uh, or meteors if you want to call them that, uh, that will be hurling towards Earth. Uh, and we need to add the game logic of our scoring, and then we need to add collision detection, and we will have our very first game finished. So stay tuned for that.